honestly, I never really thought about free speech all that much. And I think that's pretty common to Canadians. I think that it's not a big conversation here um, as compared to, you know, in the U.S., for example. Um, and I think that Canadians really take free speech for granted. So I think I was one of those people. Um, and especially, you know, as somebody who's been uh, part of the feminist movement and part of the left uh, for as long as I can remember, um, free speech is sort of a, uh, almost like a, a, a trigger word. <laughs> like, um, you know, people who say free speech or talk about free speech are treated as or assumed to be the enemy for some reason. So assumed to be, you know, on the right or a libertarian. And, you know, just because somebody disagrees with us or sees the world in a different way, doesn't make them bad. Um, for the most part, I really believe that people are well-meaning, even people who I think are doing doing harm in terms of their their political or ideological views, even people that I disagree with intensely. I think that when you actually have conversations with those people, you realize that their views really make sense. You know, maybe they don't make sense to me in terms of how I see the world and and you know what I want in terms of a just, equitable world. Um, but they certainly see it as a means to to create that you know ethical, just, good world and. Um, I don't I, I, I don't know how we're supposed to get anywhere and affect change, you know, beyond all this. I don't know if we if people on the left and people who are part of the feminist movement, people who are liberals, whatever, if we're trying to affect change, we're not going to do it by attacking and vilifying and writing people off and stereotyping them and threatening them. We're going to do it by understanding where they're coming from. And, you know, maybe even working with those people, certainly having conversations, certainly debating ideas and trying to come up with the best ideas. Our event at the Vancouver Public Library, which was held in January, uh, was focused on the issue of gender identity and women's rights. What we wanted to do was to have a conversation and to also, you know, educate the public about the history of the women's movement and the importance of sex-based rights, you know, why women's rights exist, why we need women-only spaces in certain contexts, you know, for example, transition houses, um, race, rape crisis centers, places where women go to escape male violence. You know, what we said, and anyone who attended the event and watched the video online was not in any way hateful or antagonistic um, or bigoted. It was completely respectful and it was a really you know inspiring and powerful event and the way it was talked about in the media before the event even happened was appalling um you know the cbc held a panel to discuss whether or not there might be hate speech at the event without knowing what the event was about and without contacting anyone who was involved in the event you know they had a panel to talk about an event and to talk about me and what I might say and didn't invite me on the panel. It's, you know, that's not journalism. And the CBC didn't even come to the event. And the CBC is right across the street from the Vancouver Public Library. The Vancouver Public Library tried to impose these massive security fees on us. Um, and they forced us to hold the event after hours at like, you know, 9 p.m. on a weeknight, which is really hard if you're a parent, for example, if you're a mom. Um, but nonetheless, the event sold out and and it was great. But, you know, they really they really did try to shut us down and, and we we wouldn't have it. And we had some support, um, some legal support in that regard as well. I think that so long as people aren't standing up for free speech and ensuring that this is this is a you know central value in our society then we're at real risk of losing free speech and i think that people maybe don't realize it right now but you don't want to live in a world where there's no free speech that's not going to serve the marginalized that's not going to serve the oppressed it's not going to serve people who are trying to fight the status quo um who are trying to fight those in power the left is is wrong on this. Um, the left is is 
The left is delusional if they think fighting free speech is going to serve them. It's not going to serve them. It's not going to serve any of us. We all need free speech. And, you know, I don't know who they think is going to determine who gets to say what and when and where. But whether it's the left or whether it's the right, I don't want to I don't want a dictator. You know, I don't want there to be one person or one body or one corporation determining what can be said and what can be discussed and what ideas are acceptable. That's a, that's a really dangerous thing. Have you ever had any of your events completely shut down before? And can you tell me a little bit about it if you have? No, I mean, we're real good fighters. So <laughs> they tried to shut down our event at the uh, Croatian Cultural Center here in Vancouver in the spring. They, that, uh, the staff there received countless violent threats. You know, these people don't have anything to do with this political debate. We rented a space from them and they held strong. They were great and they brought in their own security. We also brought in our own security. Um, I think like 200 protesters showed up and they kind of tried to to move towards the building and to intimidate people and they screamed at people. Um, but the security and, and the, the police here in Vancouver sort of kept them at bay and we held, we held the event and it was great. But, you know, their aim was to stop the event and to, to frighten people. Their aim wasn't to explain their position um, or to talk to us about why they thought we were wrong. It was to scare and intimidate people and bully people. And it's not okay.